Oh well, uh, good morning everybody uh, for organizing committee. Thank you very much for inviting me and for the chairman, uh, Dr. Chot. Uh, it's just a, such, uh, such a nice introduction uh, of me. Uh, I would like to share a little bit of uh, what I experienced. I'm coming from Indonesia. So uh, most, uh, most of the data, most of the information that I will be presenting here is uh, reflecting uh, in, in Indonesia and then uh, in the, what is that, in the country where, you know, nearby the equator. All right, so uh, this is a very hot topic. We are talking hot climate and we are talking hot topic. Uh, Pierre André is right. Uh, uh, we are now in the continental where the production of the broiler production increased very big. For example, here, the last three decades here, from 1992 to uh, 2010, Asia producing almost 23, uh, 23 million tons of broiler. Okay? This is the biggest as far as the quantity. Uh, the number one, uh, number two, uh, it's shared by North America and South America. Okay? Uh, in terms of the growth rate, uh, Asia is among uh, two of the highest growth rate of a uh, broiler production. Remember, 60% uh, or about 4.4 billion population of the world is in Asia. So I'm expecting the next 10, 20 years, the growth rate of uh, the production rate of the broiler is uh, very fast, especially in Asia. So we are... Uh, at the right business uh, in, in Asia. Okay, so most of the major limitation when we grow broiler, especially uh, in the hot area or in the developing country, we have uh, three major uh, problem. One problem is the scarcity of the raw material. For example, uh, some of the Southeast uh, Asia country here, we don't produce any soybean. We produce only 60% in case of Indonesia, we produce only 60% of the total uh, requirement of the corn. So we, re we really depend heavily on the imported raw material. Number two, uh, and number three, of course, uh, this is uh, uh, close together. The capital is limited. Okay, I will show you uh, what I mean by the capital limitation. And then the second thing, this is uh, our topic here. Uh, it, it is about the, uh, the climate, the limitation of the climate. So uh, number two and num number three are related very clo closely. All right, okay. This is a typical broiler houses in Indonesia and believe in some part of Asian country. So we have uh, three different uh, house area and a house uh, type. For example, this one. Uh, this is basically you raise the floor. And then uh, this one is uh, open, both is open house. Uh, uh, this one, the floor is raised, while this one is in the floor. And if you have the capital here, you could totally close, uh, close, the, uh, close the house. Even this, uh, in this picture, we have a triple decker of the floor. So basically, this one is uh, the air speed, the temperature, and things like that is well controlled. But unfortunately, in Indonesia, this number one and number two type of the horse, there are so many of them. So many of them, they are contributing quite a bit of the total broiler production in Indonesia. The difference between these two is that, you know, this one with the uh, 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 raised floor, the floor is uh, with the either bamboo or uh, 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 wooden, so, and then you set it about two centimeters apart. So the difference between these two is that here you have an ex extra ventilation other than from, uh, from the side, uh, put side of the house, you have a ventilation in the, uh, from, uh, from the floor, and also that's the fecal material, and also the, the litter is, is in the floor. So they're separating very well. But this one, you know, the fecal raw material is mixed together here. The third type is just like you see in the developed country, you know, the environment and also the, the, tep the temperature is well controlled. All right, this is the third, 
limitation that we have that we are going to discuss whole day with this. This is a very interesting. I took this uh, profile of heat in the actual of one of my uh, uh, trial farm, where still uh, I put a half of the fan is still on, but uh, the mist is off. Let's just disregard of the this picture of the first uh, ten days because this is a brooding uh, uh, brooding period. Just look at you know after the ten days. Here's the humidity, and here are the temperature. There are a couple of things that I want to pick up here. One, when we grow broiler in open house, it's almost all the time. The rest of their life, they are at the humidity level of 90%. So in that case, I really uh, have a question, you know, whether or not this bird is still have a, a, a effective way to do a panting to get rid of the heat because it's so saturated. Now, uh, the third, uh, number two is the temperature itself. If we consider the temperature is above 24, is above the, uh, the, the, neut uh, the neutral zone, so means the rest, the whole, uh, whole, whole life of the, uh, of the broiler is raised above 24 degrees. Number three, the difference between minimum and maximum in that 24 days is very huge. Sometimes it reaches 10 degrees. 10 degrees. Okay, number four, which is very important for me, that you know, once in a while in that day, we see heat spike. What I mean by heat spike is the, the temp, that, uh, that the day, the, the temperature today is higher compared to the temperature before. Sometimes it could reach two degrees. So here we are. We have a very high humidity, very high uh, temperature, and the temperature fluctuate very, uh, uh, very much about ten degrees. And then you have a heat spike. While I keep saying we heat spike, I will show you what we see in our trial. So it's again in this case we still put the put the half of the fan is on. Imagine the profile will be totally different if we shut down everything. Oh, sorry. All right, so in our experimental farm, we have three different, uh, three different style of housing. Uh, uh, the, uh, three out of our eight broiler houses, which all have a similar uh, dimension. Uh, so we have the risk, uh, the, sorry, this is the closed house, you know, it's totally, you know, you put a cooling pad in front and then exhaust in the, in the back, so you control the wind speed, you control the temperature nicely. The number two, this is the raised floor, you know, you see uh, the slide is still here, and then this is totally the open house, but it's a floor. So in terms of uh, heat stress, going to this direction, the heat stress is harder. So we collected uh, our data during the last two and a half years of these three houses, and then we plotted the body weight, uh, uh, the body weight, again the FCR. All right. If you see, uh, if, we, uh, if you see in the first slide here, this is the closed house. It's represented with the blue dot here. Body weight wise, you know, some of the some of the group could reach 2.7 kilo. This is 35 days make sex. 35 day mix sex. We could push the bird until 2.7, sometimes it's 2.75 kilo. However, when we move to this house, you know, the highest I could get is only 2.4, 2.5 here. This is, the, uh, this is uh, represented with the yellow dot. Okay, and then the worst one is the open house, open sided house with a floor the highest I could get is only 2.4. There you are. I have shifted. I have a shifted uh, body weight uh, as you know as the heat stress is getting worse. Similarly, if we see the FCR here, you know we see a reduction of FCR. So basically, what I'm trying to say is that I'm not comparing this because this is not really trial. I'm just collecting some uh, 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 the data that are available. So 
we are talking about 150 grams here. 150 grams of protein weight loss. About three to four points of FCR because of this, you know, this heat stress. Next is, all right. Uh, we also have uh, the same uh, design for our layer house where we have a uh, open sided house with, of course, you know, fan and also mist, and then compared to uh, the closed house. We did an experiment. This is a different experiment, different time of experiment. So I, I'm not, uh, I'm not trying to compare between closed house and an open house. I'm just collecting these two experiment together and just I put it side by side. The the design of the experiment is three by three factorial where I use three levels of energy and three levels of, uh, of uh, digestible amino acid, and then I just average down the number, I put it side by side. This is the feed intake as we expected, you know. The layer kept in the open houses will eat less, two grams, and then here are the handy production. Somehow, when we kept the layer in the open house, they lay a little bit more egg, remember, I'm just, I'm still putting a van and also a mist in this house. So actually this is not real, the effect of tropical heat stress. Looking at the egg weight, we have about two grams less of egg weight when we kept the bird in the open house. Egg mass, we have lower, about lower 1.4 to 1.5 kg of uh, egg mass uh, per day uh, when we kept the bird at the open house. Looking at you know the energy intake, it's not much different to me, as well as the digestive lysine intake, you know, it's very close. So this is the first uh, production period, which is about three, 30 weeks. So we break up the data for 10 weeks and then we see uh, what happened during the 10 weeks. In terms of hand day production, it turned out to be that the first 10 days, they are still lay, uh, the laying rate is still the same. But however, on the second 10 weeks and the third 10 weeks, they start, start separating. However, if we see the egg weight, it starts from the beginning that the egg weight is lower in the bird, in the layer that we kept under the open houses. When I do the calculation for the uh, metabolizable uh, intake and also digestibility intake at this three period, uh, comparing between open and close, here we could see that, you know, the energy uh, retain whatever you call it, as well as the uh, uh, digestible uh, lysine retain per, per gram egg weight is always higher in the egg laid by the layer that we kept in the in, in the open house. Okay. Also, I did not present the data here. The two grams less of the egg weight is it cannot be recovered by, by uh, what is it, by the increasing level of density of the amino acid. So what I'm trying to say, if I increase the density amino acid, they're still, you know, in the 58 grams level. So it means it seems that, you know, the heat stress layer do not respond very well with additional amino acid. Remember this slide? Okay. It's again, I have a half fan are on. Usually I put 12, but this time I put six, but no miss, no miss. I took this data we, uh, from the actual trial where we try to use a certain uh, feed additive uh, to alleviate the heat stress level. Okay, well, see what it's look like when I superimpose this data with daily mortality. The red one here is the daily mortality. Here, you know, at the 26 or 27 days, 
where you know the body weight is about 1.6 or 1.5 kilo, we see a spike of mortality in this day. It's about 3%. And then it's down again, and then we see another spike here on the 32 days, and then another one is followed by 37 days. And when we should superimpose with all of this spike, you know, they are right, you know, on top of each other. It is not because of the humidity, because the humidity is relative constant during this day. I'm not saying this is a relationship cause and an effect, no. Uh, but when I look at the bird, the nature of the dead bird, they are indicative of sudden death syndrome or flip over syndrome. So, this is it. The heat spike also occur during the early period, but I don't see any increase in mortality. So it must, uh, it has to be, uh, to do, it has to do with the body weight, you see. When you reach more than 1.5, 1.6 kilo, then you know, that heat spike is very, very effect, uh, effective to kill the bird. I try to summarize what we do know about uh, the heat stress bird, but I'm sure the next speaker will go a little uh, more deeper about, uh, about this. I'll just classify it with these uh, three groups. So in terms of uh, amino acid uh, utilization, this is what we know, that the, the, that the heat stress bird has a poorer digestibility of amino acid. However, the recent uh, publication indicating that you know there is no uh, differences in apparent ileal digestibility of amino acid from the heat stress bird. Reduction of uh, amino acid transporter in the pectoralis major and also in ileum. And increase the, uh, the retained amino acid per gain weight, especially we see uh, uh, in this particular uh, publication, we see very, very high of retained cysteine. We do see a, redu a reduction of arginine uptake, increased re lysine requirement in the female broiler under heat stress. So there you are, we have a sex effect. Uh, reduce the response to lysine supplementation. It's just like what we see in the layer that I show you a couple slides ago. So here, like what uh, Pierre Andre said, because you know, you have a, a, a decrease in protein synthesis while the uh, protein catabolism is very high, followed by uh, increase of lipogenesis and also decrease in lipolysis. You have a breast meat, you know, where the protein content and the fat content is changing. Here. So, so the heat stress affects the protein, uh, the meat quality, that's for sure. Basically, what we see here is that the heat stress seems to affect of the amino acid utilization is starting from digestion, absorption, and synthesis of breakdown. Number two, this is the immune function. So the three most uh, major organ of the immune response, thymus, bursa, spleen, the relative weight is reduced. Circulating IgM, IgG is reduced. The, the number of uh, uh, the number of IgA uh, IgA secreting cell in the epithelium is also reduced. The most striking here also that's the peritone peritoneal macrophages activity is reduced, and then it's almost always that we will see the ratio of heterophile and lymphocyte is also reduced. What does that mean? The heat stress bird experience. Uh, suppressive, uh, immunosuppressive, both of the humoral and cell mediated immunity. Next, this is gut integrity. I'm sure you know, Professor Dugatel will talk about this. So we see that, you know, the heat stress will change the intestinal morphological morphology, and usually, you know, we almost always we see the reduction of phyllite height induce anti-intestinal injury as well as increase the permeability, changes in microbial, uh, bio, uh, microbial profile in the hen gut. So that's why sometimes we see a report that, you know, putting lactobacillus or putting a bacillus subtilis improve the heat stress performance. And here, yeah, the, this is the, the, the worst. 
it's facilitated bacterial translocation from the lumen to systemic to, to the systemic. And then like uh, what Pierre and this said, all of the picture is getting uglier. Why? Because at certain country, in my country, they already banned the HGP. They not only ban the HGP, they are start controlling the usage of antioxy. That's make the picture getting very ugly. Very ugly. I have the picture here, it's ugly picture, but somehow I decided to delete it. <laughs> I did, I just deleted it, you know, in the morning. All right, this is something that I thought maybe it will be followed up, it will be discussed uh, by uh, next speaker. One, do the heat stress bird need different amount of, need different profile of amino acid? If the cysteine retain, retain cysteine is higher in the heat stress bird, and we know that the heat stress bird experience higher of oxidative heat stress, does it has to do with uh, glutathione? Ratio of lysine to arginine. This is a contradictory effect. Some people said, yes, there is a good uh, for the heat stress, but some of them said, no, there is no evidence of that. And then for threonine, Michael Kidd will uh, focus on this, you know. Trionine is first, it's a, a first limiting uh, uh, amino acid from using production. Remember, correct, Dr. Kidd? Yes. And we know that the first defense in the gut is the mucin. Okay, here's another one. Some of us doing the formulation and the, uh, 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 make it, uh, uh, what is that? You determine the MA level and also the amino acid level is independently. So my question now for the heat stress, is that necessarily to express the amino acid per one mega kilocalorie. Sorry. Now, if you look at the broiler formula, the number of the nitrogen from the excess of, uh, of, of, uh, of amino acid is very high. So can we reduce the non-essential amino acid just to, to, to simply to reduce the heat load by using more synthetic amino acid? Exogenous enzyme, uh, Mingan will more focus on, uh, on that, and then also the trace mineral. Dietary electrolyte balance, is that a myth or will it work? Will it be working effectively in, in the heat stress bird? The last one, I'll just skip this, the thermal conditioning. I think the next speaker will uh, focus on that. If this work, this would be the, the, the best efficient cost-wise way, you know, to, uh, to, to, to improve the heat stress bird. All right, I'll just skip this. Uh, this is my, all of the, you know, my visitor in my, my research fund. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Purnama. I think uh, this was a wonderful uh, way of setting the scene and you know, pointing to the cri very critical points which are being addressed today. It was, uh, it was really the right way, I think, to, to put, put everything in perspective. Thank you. And now um, I'm just looking at the screen to uh, look at the first questions uh, because they will be um, definitely addressed to uh, to somebody who has a lot of personal experience in the field, like you are. So if we read through the questions, the first one is, we always mention temperature, but we often forget to address the um, relative humidity load. But I think you really stressed on that, eh? because there's a, a direct relation there. Uh, but the relative humidity load is definitely very important. Could you comment on this a little bit further? All right, I just, well, uh, like what I, show in uh, one of the one of the slide that when you deal uh, tropical heat stress you are not talking about only temperature you are more than 90 degrees of relative humidity if so i really doubt it if the chicken will be uh, more uh, effective to get rid or to dissipate the heat load through the painting basically you shut down of that painting how hard it is, how big it is, I don't know. 
I don't know. When you combine together, you know, I don't know, it's going to be exponential, you know, uh, uh, severity or what, you know, maybe the next speaker could, you know, elaborate more. Maybe you can address one more question, which is the, um, like the um, million dollar question, I suppose. In your personal experience, in practical life, what should we do to reduce heat stress? What Close the, the house. <laughs> If you, cannot, uh, if you cannot afford to close the house, raise the floor. If you cannot raise the floor, move the, move the farm to the 700 above sea level. <laughs> Reduce the density. If you have the electricity, you put the fan. If you don't, cannot help. There will always be cost because of this. And I feel bad because we are trying to make a cheap broiler, but on the other side, I make my broiler cost is more expensive. Use dietary electrolyte balance. I do personally believe it will help. That's the cheapest way. Replace your sodium chloride with sodium bicarbonate and watch out for your chloride. Thank you very much. I think that was very, very important. Thank you, Thank you Dr. Punama. Thank you.